It used to be just bare land, but it's starting to look like a real town now. It looks like they're building more and more houses, too. Yeah, look on that roof over there. That's the master carpenter of the Carpenters Guild. He heard about Arnian and came with all his tools and apprentices to help. He even refused to take money for it. He's so generous. Hmm, looks like the manly carpenters are out in full force. You could learn a thing or two from them. So, Yuri has a history too. I'd like to know where all of you came from. Hmm, where should I start? We already know what you're gonna say, you big wuss. Ugh, fine. Rita, then how about you? I've done research in Ospia for a while. Jeez, big shocker there. What about you, Judith? Me? I lived in a town before I met Baul. Everybody called me a prim and proper little girl. You gotta be kidding. Estelle, you grew up in the castle, right? Yes, I spent all of my time in the castle reading books. I'm so jealous of all of you. See? No surprises! Just like Rita's story! Doesn't anyone want to ask old Raven? I might have some interest in tales to tell. In your case, old man, I think I've got a pretty good idea what you'd say. My past might spin you for a loop and have you fallen head over heels for me. You don't know. I can't say you've established a lot of credibility so far as stories are concerned, old man. Don't be so cold! Come on, let me tell my story!
Rita, you were resisting at first, but you really got into the act, didn't you? N no, you were just taking your part so seriously. I had no choice but to follow along. Your costume was pretty cute, too. What a nice treat for all of us. Hey! Your acting was really on point, Carol. <laughs> well, I used to be in the Actors Guild after all. You've been in all sorts of guilds, kid. Anyway, that wasn't even acting. I'd like to act in another play with everyone else someday. No way. Never again. Me neither. I don't want Rita to set me on fire again. I'd like to be in the play next time. I'd have to be the lead, of course. I had my doubts, but it looks like everyone had a good time. When faced with a daunting foe, they often betray their comrades and save themselves. They gain more power than they need, and grow overconfident once they have it. This had been my understanding of human nature. Humans are quite interesting. They become distrustful once betrayed. One moment they may slander a friend, and the next be moved to feelings of love. Their hearts may grow more compassionate, or be lost to depravity. Truly puzzling creatures. All of that makes them dangerous. How long until they are drowned by their thirst for power? How long until they betray all those dear to them in their struggle for supremacy? When they stand before a mighty enemy, will they keep their resolve? Do you not believe in them, Sylph? I wished only to convey the delicacy of the situation. Should they ever become too great a nuisance, we need only burn them to the ground. It seems that the conversion to spirit form has not tempered our leader's fiery wrath. Nor has there been any change in the optimism that so characterized you, Undine. And you remain every bit as cautious and careful as you ever were. Has not that fear kept you in constant concern over the catastrophe in the sky? It was all the Entelikea and humans could do to seal it away 1,000 years ago. The humans have said that as spirits, we possess the power to defeat it. However... Say no more. Speaking it out loud will only further increase your worry. We are a new power that will form the cornerstone of this world. The Adephagos is nothing. We may possess enough power to defeat the Adephagos once and for all. But all our work will have been for naught if the humans cannot face this threat. Do not forget that it is the mortals who must use our powers against the Adephagos. Did you not place your faith in their hands? As there are no others to whom we can turn, I will entrust them with our final hope. Then be content to stand by and watch over them. Believe I, too, await the day when I make known my full power. <sighs> Speak, Gnome, if you have something we should know. He says we are left to make one of two choices. Perish along with this world, or entrust our powers to the humans. They may be fragile, but their hearts burn with a determination to live, I will stand with them. Do you mean it, Gnome? He says I too share their desire to go on living. That is the life for those who grow old and die. We must live as suits our nature. No. Like them, the oncoming catastrophe could sow the seeds of our obliteration as well. Gnome. Let us, too, struggle for as long as we can, as the humans do. Goodbye. I hope everyone will accept this. I mean, that the world is changing. There's a difference between understanding something and accepting something. It'll take time. But this is the only way that's left. 
We just have to accept it. This isn't a choice we've made freely. We had to choose it. Not everyone will welcome it, that's for certain. But... It's something we have to do. That's what you want to say, right? Y yeah That's fine, then. Cheer up, Carol. Okay. You think it'll work out, right? Who knows? Judith, I can't tell if you're trying to make me feel better or not. What you want is different from what's actually there. Reality can be a harsh mistress.
Whoa, what's the occasion? Little impromptu training session? Well, when I think about fighting Duke, I know I gotta be as strong as I can! I like your spirit. <laughs> I'd expect that from Carol, but Yuri brings a twinkle to this old man's eyes to see you training. On second thought, let's call it a day. What? We were just getting started! Never fear! I think I can teach you a thing or two. You can thank me later. <laughs> You're volunteering to help, Raven? You're gonna jinx him. <laughs> now, don't be like that. There's no beating an old man once he finds his stride, you know? Would you spar with me as well, Raven? Hey, well, if you both want to, I can't say no. It'll take more than luck to beat Duke after all. All right, Carol, no mercy? Right. No mercy! Fight!